Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. We are going to be taking a big delve into the world of Candy Cross, something that is professionally and personally a really fantastic addition to my life. So for those of you that don't know, let's just initially explore what Canicross actually is. It is essentially a sport where you run with your dog attached to you. However, you don't need to be a runner. You don't need to even have aspirations for being a runner. And I have got many clients who utilize both the equipment and the effect it has on their dogs to retrain their dogs, train their dogs from young, or help support them on their journey to having better behaved dogs. The Canicross community as a whole is a really welcoming one and certainly from my perspective when I stumbled across the big community that there is actually on social media I felt very very welcome and I've also met some really really lovely friends so for people on their own if you move to somewhere new and you've got a dog and you want to just get out there but you might not necessarily want to do classes it's a really nice alternative not only does it keep you fit but it gets you out socializing and meeting like-minded people as well initially I came across Candy Cross a few years ago now I decided to enter the Battersea Muddy Dog Run and rocked up there with Hogan and my slip lead and realized really quickly that not only could he not go off lead there was no way I was running in with a slip lead attached and taking on 15 obstacles so 70 pounds later my new harness and my race belt which attached around my waist and was a little bungee line which then attached to Hogan's harness on the start line ready to rock and roll right up the front of the pack it was at this point that I really realized very quickly that Hogan had as much competitive drive as me and we set off like a bullet out of a gun with my legs spinning right behind him and him loving every minute of it. This would be a new sport for me, not just to enjoy with Hogan, but also to enjoy with all sorts of different people. I watched all sorts of different dogs join in, big, small, fat, thin, a variety of different breeds. So it was a really, really lovely introduction to see that actually there was something else out there where I could bring my sport together with my time with my dogs. Hi guys, so Hogan and I have come to Box End today. We are entered into the Tri Dog Triathlon tomorrow and also Sunday morning. Essentially, we need to be swimming 80 meters together in a beautiful lake, which is right next to me. We will then come out into transition and pick up my bike, which has a brand new piece of equipment attached called a bike draw arm. Hogan will be attached to that and we will set off on a two and a half K cycle bike draw experience. We then come back into transition and dump the bike and rack the bike. Am I boring you? I think we might be done and we will then go off on a two and a half kilometer canny cross run which we know what we're doing with that so it's all good i'm going to take you around and take little snippets so you can see the course it's really really amazing one of the nicest venues i've been to and although this is probably going to be carnage tomorrow i'm actually really excited and really looking forward to it just to see how we do i had a couple of concerns when i first started running hogan i was really concerned about anatomically how he would cope so obviously he's got the best part of 50 60 kilos attached to him and he is pulling the entire time so that's obviously taking a fair bit of strain on his little body so I built it up really really gradually we just did short distances lots of stops to start with while I built him up physically and one of the things I was really encouraged to see is his back legs his hind legs his kind of rump area and his quads and hamstring regions were really really building up really 
really nicely. So really supporting that back end. And I was quite worried that actually the back end would struggle a little bit given that dogs carry the majority of their weight on their front end. But it was actually completely the opposite. And I guess because he's digging quite deep to maintain balance and he's obviously thinking about what he was doing, it was quite evident quite quickly that this was an entire body workout for him. So not just front loading like I was concerned about to start with. The other things I wanted to research were how far could he go? So for me, I've obviously got my limits and I knew he was younger, fitter, stronger and, and more adapt to actually doing long distance running than I was. But still, I've been running for a little while and I'm obviously doing a fair bit of distance. So I was just wanted to make sure that, you know, his head might be telling him that he could do it, but actually physically what kind of an impact was this going to have on him on an endurance level. So I think it took around six weeks for him to be able to tolerate anything up to a half marathon. Now, Hogan, when we started this, he was a three-year-old dog, he's now six. So he's kind of in the prime of his life the whole time we've been doing this. He literally takes a half marathon, and I know now we've done 30 kilometers on the Welsh Hills, and he took all of, all of those events in his stride. So whereby I was absolutely on my back and needing a week to recover from the big events, he was raring to go after a short nap, some food, ready to go out and have a nice time again. So what do we know about dogs? We know that they are brilliant fat burners. So essentially, if they run out of natural energy from their food, they will just start to convert really quickly to utilize any fat on their body. And they're really, really efficient at this. So there was no chance really that he was gonna run out of energy with the level of stuff that I was actually doing. So I'm often asked when I do these, particularly the longer events, what sort of provisions do I make for having my dog with me when we do, we're do? we doing kind of anything over and above about 15, 16 kilometers. Essentially, they do amazingly well. And no, you don't need to carry a lot of stuff. In fact, what I would not be doing is feeding my dog even close to any kind of long run or event because of the, the risk of causing something like a twisted gut. So I actually give him a really good meal the night before I don't do it in one hit so he might get four small meals through the day the day before I'm about to do a big long run with him depending on what time I'm running if it's late morning I might give him a really really early breakfast so somewhere between five and seven just something very light he's always got free access to water anyway and then he wouldn't have anything else so I do know people that give dogs snacks en route and certainly some of the lighter breeds that have less fat across their body entirely may well be needing something just to keep them going but for Hogan he's a big strong solid dog and that's just never been a factor for him whatsoever. I would always carry something in the car or in my backpack depending on where I am that he can have about 45 minutes afterwards and there'll always be a little thank you snack that he'll get a little treat just when he finishes for being a really good boy but essentially I don't look to feed him. Water is really important I guess the most important thing for him and obviously this is different for every dog but Hogan particularly because he's a he's a big strong muscular dog he gets hot really really quickly so I actually get really stressed if it's either a dry day and there aren't going to be any puddles on route or it's a route that potentially doesn't have any water stops and ideally this would be a pond a lake or a river for me or a stream the provided water stops aren't that great I usually empty one of the canisters and, and tip water on his head as well as in giving him water to drink so I really do look for that when I book an event you know what's my terrain gonna be like and is he gonna cope so just doing the course recce oh such a beautiful day but way too hot for hoagie so fortunately we've got the lake as you can see behind me so every few minutes actually I'm just chucking him in to cool off just stopped at this bit thought I'd do a little video just let him have a breather and then I'm gonna take him down back down to the lake. Course is amazing, really well marked out. Ground's not too bad, it's uh, grassy underfoot. Absolutely flying around today. Uh, so hopefully he'll be really confident tomorrow. I'm not competitive at all. I really wanna just do this for a bit of fun. Um, I just thought it'd be quite nice to document it for you guys as well. Um, anybody wanting to come and do it. It's in Bedfordshire, Box End. And uh, yeah, it's about an hour for me. So well worth the drive. And it looks like they've got quite a lot on regarding entertainment and stuff as well. Really nice venue, as I say. So I'm gonna get back to it, check out where the rest of the course takes me, but all good so far. See you in a bit. Get a drink. Bit 
the other thing that I'm quite careful with are his paws. Dog paws, particularly adult dog paws, after about 18 months, two years, are fairly hardy. And here in the UK, we don't have too many issues with terrain. Anything with gravel paths, kind of granite gravel paths, can actually be problematic. And I know certainly there's some paths down in the New Forest are great for cycling on and not that great for dog paws. People do use boots and stuff. I have never had the necessity to consider that and he generally fares quite well. So I don't use anything additional at all. Harness wise, it's really important that their shoulders are free. They must be able to move. So no harnesses that cut across the front of the chest and they must go over the body so that the bottom part of the trachea is clear so that you won't hear them coughing and the shoulders are free to move. So there's some really good harnesses out there specifically made for dogs that are going to do running. For me, I prefer to use the belts that you step in. The, the dog belts that go around your waist are great. For me, they move around all over the show. They're not very comfortable. I tend to ride up around my back and I'm constantly being irritated by them, but they can be a really nice, cheap alternative if you just want to get started. And if you're going just to be walking or hiking with your dog, then it gives you enough pull. There's no reason why you should have the more expensive step-in type of run belt, but it's purely personal choice and there's quite a lot out there on the market. And just as an aside from that, I do two things. I have my loose lead walking and heel work is collar and lead. And the dog walks by the side of me. As soon as I put the harness on, the dog is given permission to lead out front. And the majority of dogs will actually pick that up really, really quickly. So don't worry that you're going to mess up all your heel work if you start canny crossing and using a harness, as long as you've got a difference between the bits of equipment that you're choosing to use. So I think Canicross as a, as a whole brings a whole different entity to spending time with your dog. Both of you are getting something out of it and I definitely feel it really improves the trust in your relationship, makes your relationship much more robust. It gets the dog to really start to listen to you, be aware of you, and you can really start to work as a team quite quickly. I know for me, it brought my running on immensely. I, coming from a swimmer's background, do not have a lot of power at all in my running. My technique's okay and I can go and go. I've got a big engine, but I don't have a lot of power. So Hogan is a dream come true for me because he's my power pack. So he actually emphasizes my technique. He's improved my cadence. So for all the runners in you out there, actually spending that time with any dog, big or small, they are gonna run faster than you for longer than you. So actually you can really benefit and improve your run technique just by having the support of a dog attached and he or she pulling you along nicely. I think the other element that's really important to consider is the mental health benefit of that time with your dog. Now, if you've got a dog that runs off or a dog that can be a little bit reactive, actually finding the time to be with your dog can actually be quite stressful. And although you may have got a dog to, to kind of give you some downtime and, and relaxation time, get you outdoors, if your dog isn't that amenable, you might maybe have a rescue dog, then actually that time is not calm, it's not easy, and it's certainly not relaxing. I have lost count of the amount of people who've been in that situation and been really disappointed that have then chosen to use the, the canny cross style of exercise in their dog and it has completely transformed their lives. There are many, many reasons for that, which I'll go into in, in a moment, but just for the sake of the time that you spend with your dog, and making that as quality time as possible. If you are in control of them 
and you are both enjoying the activity that you're doing. So I use it for many reasons. I use it as an interim means of endurance exercise in the dog whilst we are retraining, setting leadership programs in the home and also giving the dog some downtime, maybe to break a habit if we've got a dog that's very reactive. I know for sure that many of the dogs that I see are getting very limited exercise, if any at all, particularly for the big, strong, powerful breeds. So Canny Cross really allows us to deal with that energy, that endurance element of the dog that can be problematic if you don't channel it. It allows us to be able to see if the dog actually has a behavior problem, are the owners just not meeting the dog's needs? So there's so many elements to canine behavior that you need to be taking into consideration before just assuming you have an unhappy, miserable or poorly behaved animal. So when I'm looking at a case, I will deal with the endurance element in a variety of different ways through training, through impulse control, and also using different ways of actually allowing the dog to release that energy. Whether it is through controlled gun dog exercises, whether it is through very controlled ball play or tug toy play, or in many, many cases, the use of Candy Cross, which just allows owners to safely walk their dogs without the impact of worrying about, you know, anxiety and bumping into dogs that their dog is going to be reactive to or cars or joggers or anything else. So let's look at how Candy Cross has a chemical impact on the dog in a positive way. So just the same as you or I taking in exercise and actually having that real feel good factor afterwards. Those chemicals involved in that are all your happy hormones. So endorphins, serotonin, dopamine, they're all involved in that period of exercise that you have. It gives you an opportunity to get rid of any stress hormones, which would be cortisol or adrenaline, along with many others, and just flip that bar so that you can get rid of those and actually start to feel a little bit calmer, a little bit more relaxed. It does the same in the dog. So if we can look at dogs that are highly reactive to certain environmental triggers, we can get them into a situation where they're running and exercising on a consistent endurance basis, essentially pulling their owners actually assist with that and makes that happen quite quickly. What we actually get is a flip into those happy hormones, so that nice calm brain, so that the dog can actually feel a lot more stable, a lot more comfortable, and then we can look to introduce the triggers and teach the dog a different way of behaving and reinforce and reward that accordingly. So essentially what you see on the surface of a dog just being allowed to pull its owner down the street is just a really superficial observation over what is actually going on. So the bigger picture provides us with a massive platform to be able to retrain our dogs, to be able to get those really high reactive endurance bred breeds to get into a calm, stable frame of mind without actually having to physically have them outdoors eight, 10 hours a day trying to meet their exercise needs. We can also look at at the dog's demeanor and temperament when you bring them home. So a dog who you've taken to the park and essentially just consistently thrown a ball for, run round with, chased, walked the perimeter of the same field over and over again with them doing their own thing, will come back and it will very, very clearly be unbalanced, high energy, very busy. They might chew things when they get back. They might tear around the garden like nutters. You might be looking at a dog that looks like it's had no exercise at all, where in actual fact what's happened, it's very likely to be overstimulated and over aroused and you've taken no time at all to calm that dog down. That's where your candy cross comes in. So if you canny cross the dog to the park to get rid of that initial energy, did your training at the park, walked a nice figure of eight if you've only got one field to walk around, or do an out and back if you're on a river, and then the final part would be back on that canny cross equipment to allow the dog to get busy mentally and physically before you bring them home. Then you can teach them a nice calm bed command and switch them off afterwards. 
So there's a really nice website out there called dogfit.co.uk. They have a whole bunch of instructors that actually teach people how to candy cross with their dogs. There's a wealth of information on there regarding equipment. I've also written an article on my Puppy Coach website about how to get into Candy Cross and my journey if you want to read about that. There are various different Facebook pages, there's people doing it in different countries which is just the most amazing thing to see when they're covering all sorts of terrain in just one country. We certainly don't have mountains and ice in, in one part of the UK and then desert in the other. So some places in Canada and America are just astounding if you follow some of those people on social media. But what we do have is some beautiful countryside, some great river paths to run on, lovely woods and forests to run in. So you can really do some really nice exploring. So I think I've kind of covered from a personal perspective what Canny Cross brought to me in the form of friends, the relationship with my dog, the bond that we now have, the, the adventures that we've had together, the achievements and challenges that we've succeeded. But I think also it brought a massive element to my professional work in life. Just having knowledge and experience of how Canny Cross works and being able to educate my clients knowing that they don't have to run. So I've got lots of people that hate sport, but actually love walking their dogs. So these power walks that they do with their dogs, with the dog attached, have just been a really nice, healthy addition to their lives. And they don't have to be breaking out in a sweat or feeling the discomfort of actual running. Give it a go, don't waste your time. much for watching this video guys and I really hope you've enjoyed it. Hopefully those of you that potentially are dealing with reactivity in your dogs have found something that may well be able to help. Please please consider it. There's lots of help out there. I'm very happy to answer questions. There are lots of people that do podcasts on the subject, write articles, so you'll find lots and lots of information online. Like I say, if you've got any questions, please come back to me. I will finish up this video now and say thank you for watching and as always, if you liked what you've seen, please do like and subscribe as it just allows me to keep these videos coming. Thanks a lot guys and I'll see you soon, bye.